Hey guys, Terry here. Hey, if you're just starting out with scrapbooking, I want to give you a few tips on um, what to buy or maybe what not to buy. So um, I've got a list of several things that are my top tips on what I think you would, if I had to do it all over again, what I would buy instead of, um, and then things I learned along the way. So uh, there's a lot of tips. If you're starting out or maybe you're just trying to pare down uh, in your craft room and use just the stuff that you um, find very useful, um, hopefully these tips can help. So the first thing I would suggest is think about whether you are someone that wants to print your photos at home or whether you're more likely to just send them out to uh, Sam's Club or Costco or Walgreens um, to have your photos printed. So, of course, I suggest that you organize your photos somewhere, whether it's on your, you know, we take a lot of photos with our phones, um, upload those somewhere so that you have them backed up and they don't get lost or if something happens to your phone. But I like to use Snapfish, and then I like to have them sent to Walgreens. Uh, Walgreens a lot of times will have a deal where it's 14 cents or so a print. Um, I do like my selfie. Uh, before I had my selfie, I had a um, picture mate. Canon makes the selfie. Um, but what I do find is these aren't very expensive, but they um, they only last a few years. Something will eventually start happening to either the rollers or something. They get they get crazy. So um, I do like having this for printing. When I want to print uh, smaller photos, it's great for that. But if I'm just doing a standard 4x6, I love sending them to Walgreens. So that would be my suggestion, is really think about whether you're going to print the photos at home. It's not cheap. I mean, by the time you're buying the paper and the ink, um, printing at home is very expensive. Okay, the next item is um, cutting machines. Now, there are electronic ones now. Um, it's funny, I see people using, I see videos where people are using the electronic ones, but they're still keeping their manual, um, you know, crank ones for embossing folders and stuff like that. So um, I'm the jury is still out on the electronic cutting ones. What's nice is that you don't have to manually crank them, but then you need electricity. Um, so I, I don't know, I'm not sold on them yet. But what I wanted to say about these cutters is, this is the, the Sizzix Big Shot um, Plus. So this has a wider, um, normally these are only six inches wide, this one is nine inches wide. So I like this for if you have a die that is very large. The other nice thing about it is the plates for this are nine by, um, I think 11. And um, you can put a lot on here and cut out a whole bunch at a time. So um, I had a smaller one and um, the handle actually broke on it. It fell out of the back of the car. Uh, so this, this handle is fragile, so be careful if you are porting it. Um, but I then I bought the larger one because I bought dies. Um, I bought circular dies and stuff that were larger than the 6-inch. So think about, you know, the, I think this one is, it costs a little bit more, but it's more versatile because it's larger and you can cut more. So love that. Um, I do have a little sidekick which is nice. I've got some commonly used dies and a little tin here. So if I go somewhere, I can take this. Or if I just want to have this on my desk for card making, um, this, is, this is really convenient. So I have a large one and a small one, and, uh, and that works out well. But I know there's a million options out there. So I am really happy with the, um, with the larger uh, Sizzix Big Shot. Okay, here's one I get asked about all the time. So when it comes to electronic cutters, um, I have a Cricut and I have a Brother Scan and Cut. So some people are in the Cricut camp, some people are in the Silhouette camp. Um, what I would tell you is go into their software. You can download the software and play with it even before you buy a machine. So try out the Silhouette software, try out the Cricut software, see which one kind of appeals to you. Um, of course, they're always updating it and making um, changes to it, um, but I think you'll get a feel for 
um, what style you like. They both do the exact same thing. They're relatively priced the same. So, um, you know, get the machine that you like the software that goes with it, okay? And then when it comes to the Brother Scan and Cut, um, there's things the Cricut can do. There's things the Brother Scan and Cut can do. So I don't think they're um, the same use. Um, I use my Brother Scan and Cut to scan stuff. I can scan stuff that's um, 12 inches wide. So I love it for that. It has some built-in shapes. The more expensive models have more built-in shapes. I don't use it for the shapes. So I'm basically scanning stamps and scrapbook pages with my Brother Scan and Cut. Um, you can um, play with that software too. I just think it, its feature, its wonderful feature is uh, that it scans and I always tell people to buy the cheapest model they can find because you're really not using it for the shapes. Now that being said, um, if you um, were only going to have one machine, I would suggest this one. The software is easy to use. You can uh, download shapes and bring it into the machine using the software. Um, you can also buy um, drives, thumb drives that you can plug into it for shapes. So, um, and then you would also have the scanning capability. So, the Cricut and Silhouette have print then cut, but it's not the same as scanning and cutting around something. The print and cut means that you have to have a graphic file that someone has created that has the print marks on it and it will cut it because it has those registration marks on it. The scan and cut will simply, whatever you put in here, you can cut. So, so do some playing with the software before you buy one of the brands and, uh, and see what they do. Okay, I think the next one I want to go over is uh, 12 by 12 paper storage. So I see um, a lot of solutions that are storing paper um, in, in a stack horizontally, and I really like vertical storage. So I think when it's vertical, you can flip through it. Um, it can be placed on a shelf. And another thing to keep in mind is make sure you're buying stuff that will store 12 by 12. A lot of stuff is sold that really, really the paper doesn't fit in it. So make sure it's, uh, it fits 12 by 12. And then also, and that, that includes the paper uh, storage plastic containers, but also when you're buying those cubes, make sure the cube will fit because this is, in order to store this 12 by 12 paper, it is taller than 12 inches. So make sure when you're buying uh, those cube systems, you're buying something. The IKEA Calyx works. Sometimes you have to store this on its side so that it's not as tall, but still it'll work vertically this way. But um, like I said, just, just take measurements and make sure that your paper can fit and, uh, and, and you'll be successful with that. Okay, trimmers is another big category. So, I've bought a lot of trimmers. <laughs> I started with the Fiskars uh, trimmer that had the blades in it. Uh, this one is from Stampin' Up. It is amazing. I love that it has the uh, trimmer and the scoring blades and um, they've made a couple different models. Um, but the Fiskars and this one, you do have to buy replacement blades, um, but they work great. And like I said, I love that the score, uh, is, score blade is built into it. So buy a quality trimmer if you're gonna buy this kind. And um, I love Creative Memories. Their tools are awesome. So this one I use mainly for cutting photos. So photograph paper cuts great with this. It's a perfect size. I use this for the mosaics and I've got the sizing here so I can cut my pictures to the right size for the grid paper for mosaics. Um, so love this for photo cutting and this, will, this is also a good size for um, card making. So this is very versatile. And then um, Creative Memories has a curvy cutter um, they've changed this over the years, but I love this because this works um, to cut curves in your paper. So if you've got coordinating paper, this works great to cut one paper. This, this uh, you know, has a bigger wave on it. This one has a more uh, slight curve to it. 
Uh, that works great if you're into the Kiwi Lane um, system where you layer your papers, your coordinating papers for layout. And this is just a quick way to make a couple of coordinating pieces of paper and have that on your page layout. So um, I've got this style of trimmer. Um, but my favorite overall, what I use all the time, is this guillotine cutter. Um, it self um, sharpens the blade. I've had this for years. Um, it's very nicely made. Um, it has storage on the bottom for the handle and for the side piece. And uh, I just leave this out on my desk and use it all the time. I love it because you don't have to replace the blades. And also you can cut multiple pieces of paper on here. Um, I like this smaller one. They make, of course, the big 12-inch one. I like this 6-inch one uh, just because it takes up less space on the table and it's just as versatile. So um, you take this side piece out. It very quickly hooks into here. And then you've got, you know, all the space, all the, uh, this goes up to 12 and a half inches. So, uh, love this. It doesn't take up as much space. Um, it's very, made very well, and it's, it's hard to find. It goes in and out of inventory everywhere. I don't know why, but uh, maybe it's because it's so popular. But I really recommend the guillotine cutter versus uh, one that you have to uh, replace the blades on. Um, but... You know, it's it's just the lesson that I've learned. I had the Fiskars, I think I had another brand, and um, I know We Are Memory Keepers makes one, but um, these are the ones that over the years I've whittled it down to. Um, and like I said, the, this one's what I use the most. This is one I use for photos. Uh, this one, I like that it has the scoring blade on it and it works well, but you have to replace the blades. And um, I love that I use this more than the Kiwi Lane um, thing. If you're not familiar with Kiwi Lane, let me grab that. Here's my Kiwi Lane. I keep it in this uh, extra, lar extra large pencil box. And um, they've got sized um, pieces for card making. But this is the scrapbooking system that they have. So. Here's an example of a layout where they have used these different pieces to make layouts. And it, the idea is that you've just got, here's the pieces. They've got curves. They're uh, traceable, so they're nice thick plastic. You put this on your paper, trace it with a pencil, and then cut it. And you can either erase the pencil or ink on it. But it's a really cute system. They've got many different um, styles of these, um, you know, different waves. Um, but I think what I would recommend is, what I got caught up in is, was collecting all of the sets. So they all make various different cuts, and they all make beautiful layouts. But what I found in actuality, after I collected many of the sets, was that I still went back to the Creative Memories because you just need to make a couple of curves and you need them to not, you need them to kind of alternate so your paper lays so you can see both pieces of the piece of paper. So I find this much more versatile than the Kiwi Lane. So um, don't, my advice would be don't get collectionitis where you want to collect all the different um, pieces that they came out with. I, I collected many of these. I don't use them. So that would be my advice is just um, try out a couple of them, but don't buy the whole set, right? I mean, I think that's what they know. They know we collect stuff. So that would be in my advice, is don't collect the whole set. Use, even with inks, right? With inks, um, don't collect many different companies. Uh, find a company that you like, or you, think of the ink colors that you use. You know, I never use yellow to ink with, you know? So don't buy yellow. So I think we get caught up in that collection um, where we just need to have everything in the collection. So um, I have a... Um, I'll show you. 
I have this uh, container that I bought. I think it's for making a centerpiece. So I have that piece and I have my inks in it. And what I like about it is I have a rainbow of colors and I can't outgrow this unit. So I've got every color of the rainbow and I just don't need any more. So, um, you know, find a space and just limit yourself to. Here's another item. I had a larger uh, score pal. I had the great big one. I think it was 12 by 12. And I found that it just, it took up a lot of space. So I ended up getting this little one. Um, I make cards with it, so um, this is a great size. And if you have a piece of paper that's longer than this, I simply score from the top, turn the paper around, and score the rest of it. So I like the smaller size of the um, scoreboard here. There's various different brands. This is We Are Memory Keepers. Um, so I like that. Something else you want to keep in mind is where the lines are. I've seen some of these have them like just at the half inch line and you really want something that has all the eighth inch. So keep that in mind when you're buying a score pal. And um, I would say too that if you're trying to save space, if you have a trimmer that has a scoring blade on it, I don't know that you need a separate scoreboard. So, so keep that in mind. Um, one other thing that I would talk about is um, the Misties. I love the Misties. Um, I find that I don't even need the little stampin' blocks because I have a Misty. Uh, the Misty allows you to stamp, and if you don't get all the spots, you can re-ink it and stamp it again. So love that. Um, there's different brands. Misty was the original one that came out with this hinge system. So I love this, and um, I got the smaller one at the beginning because I thought, well, I'm just going to use it for card making, and this one works great, but then I did find that there was times that I wanted to make something a little bit larger. So this one is um, five inches wide, and this one is six and a half inches wide. They make a 12-inch one. Um, again, I think that I don't know that I would use it for... Um, something that large. If I'm stamping on a scrapbook page, I can just put it in here and use it. Or stamp on something else and then put that on my page. So um, I do recommend getting the little bit larger one than the small one. Now that I've used both, I just think you can do more with the larger one. The other thing that's nice is, um, you know, your, your card front fits in here. But if you have a need to stamp, um, maybe have a flower or something that's stamping off that size, you can put your uh, card base in here and have your stamp be a little bit off of it. So I just think the size is more versatile. Oh my gosh, here's another good one. When I first started out, I was buying all different colors of embossing powder. Um, and this stuff doesn't last um, for years and years and years. You'll find that it does not melt as well over the many years. So I would suggest just buying clear and white and then if you've got ink pads of different colors stamp something like this was a what's this? This is plum, right? So if I've got a purple ink I can stamp that with purple and then stamp it with clear and melt the clear embossing powder or even just use the clear embossing powder on top of this. If your ink pad is juicy enough, you've got enough time to stamp it and then put clear embossing powder on it. So I don't need purple embossing powder if I've already got the purple ink and a clear. So um, avoid buying these many different colors of embossing powder. And um, I find that I mainly use white and clear, so I keep those in a large container that I can just quickly pop the lid off, sprinkle it on it right over top of this container, and that works well. So I've got, um, I've got white and clear, and I've got them labeled there. So um, just, just a money saver that you don't need to buy the different colors of embossing powders. Okay, I think my last category is um, tape runners. 
So um, I have used for years the Tombow um, tape runners. I like it because I bought the um, outside casing and then you can buy refills for it. So, and then if you go to office supply places, you can buy these in bulk and really save on the refills. So I, I usually get these for less than $2 each. And um, I love that about them. So I've also seen people use the uh, that tape gun that what people like about that great big tape gun is that you can buy uh, the refills for that too. And um, there's a, I forget, I'll, I'll put on the screen here how much footage is on those. So those work great too. And I think my biggest advice is, you know, whatever you decide to use, stick with it. I see people that have many different brands and then that becomes expensive because you're buying the refills for a lot of different types. Um, pick one and stick with it and then let that be your uh, method of, um, you know, for, for tape runner. So um, love the Tombos, love that I can buy these refills. It's, they're easy to load. I've seen people struggle with different brands that are not easy to load. These ones just pop right in, and um, <laughs> they do, truly, they pop right in. And, uh, and like I said, stick with the brand and, uh, and, and stick with it instead of buying a lot of different brands and then being frustrated with, you know, which refill goes with which one. So, so I think that's it. I hope this was helpful. It's my advice on, um, you know, what has worked well for me. And then um, what I've, uh, not that you can save money on this hobby, but maybe it helps you save, right? So that you're not buying and rebuying or uh, changing things up. So, so I hope this helped and I hope you have a great week. Bye guys.